Mary Whitten Cackins was among the first generation of women to enter psychology in the late 1800s and early 1900s. She studied philosophy and classics at Smith College. After she graduated, Mary moved on to teach Greek at Wellesley College, a liberal arts college for women, until she considered teaching a new subdiscipline of philosophy named psychology. Petitions were made before she was hired with the requirement that she hold the job for one year. In addition to that, she had to continue her education, and attended Clark University for Psychology and Harvard University for Philosophy. She had special arrangements made for her to attend seminars where women were usually not permitted. At Harvard, she was the only student present at William James's lectures because the male students refused to sit in a class where a female was present. Despite her achievements, Mary remained only a guest at Harvard. She had completed all requirements for the Ph.D., passed all exams, and received recommendations from her professors, but yet she was denied the honor simply because she was a woman. Around 1891, Mary worked with Edmund Sanford at Clark University studying dreams using systematic introspection. Her dream research project involved reviewing the contents of people's dreams and recording them over a seven-week period. Mary described her work as very simple, record each night immediately after waking from a dream, and every remembered feature of it. She recorded over 205 dreams in this manner, with an average of four dreams per night. Her major finding through her research was, that there existed a close connection between the dream life and the waking life, and that the dream will reproduce, in general, the persons, places and events of recent sense perception. While working with William James, Mary had strived to study attention. She chose association as her focus for a number of years and developed paired associate learning. Her research method involved showing participants a series of colors paired with numbers, and then testing to see how many of the numbers the participants could recall that had been paired with the colors. She was pleased that she had made, in her own words, a slightly significant contribution to experimental psychology. She found that in showing people a series of paired colors and numbers, people were more likely to remember a number that was joined with a given color rather than a vividly colored number by itself. Mary thought there were three different basal theories relating to the psychology of the self, that of the self, that of the object, and that of the self's relation or attitude toward its object. She received help from Hugo Munsterberg to build the foundations of her personal theories and principles of psychology. The main theory she derived from him was the double standpoint in psychology, that every experience should be looked at and dealt with from the perspective of subsequent mental events and the conscious self. However, she later switched to the philosophy of absolute personalism, which corresponded with her perception that psychology is most naturally, consistently, and effectively treated as a study of conscious selves in relation to other selves and to external objects. Mary Wooden Cackins has earned her place in the history of psychology due to her many accomplishments as a woman and a psychologist. Although being female prevented her from receiving her Ph.D., it never prevented her from accomplishing her goals. In 1891, she opened one of the first psychological laboratories in the United States at Wellesley College. Mary made numerous contributions to society including her revolutionary research on dreams, paired associate technique for studying memory, and development of a form of self-psychology. She made a tremendous impact on women's rights when she became the first female president of both the American Psychological Association and the American Philosophical Association. Mm -hmm.